<laughs> it's, I would feel awkward doing it because you'll hear. Well, what the, what are you planning it's on like doing? It's like my phone voice. <laughs> what are you, oh be no! Like, Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to something that I don't usually do. Uh, this is a sort of podcast-ish setup. It is. Um, but I don't know. It's it's going to be a chat. It's going to be a fun discussion. Uh, all about the MCU and the recent massive thing that's almost surpassed Avatar in revenue stream. Uh, I got mad bucks. Avengers, Avengers Endgame, Avengers. and I'm here with Max. Max, you bought. You know, oh, you've got no energy. People look at it. Like, literally, just be like, Max doesn't want to be here. Well, that's a joke. I hate it. <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, don't worry. So. Uh, I just thought I'd do this because a lot of YouTube is all going to be complicated. It's going to be like, oh, we've got to have that massive production value and all that kind of stuff. But we're here to have a nice, calm chat about Avengers. So, overall, Avengers Endgame. What do you what What did you think, Max? What do you think of Avengers well, Endgame? I thought it was very good. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, starting off, Max, what do you think of Avengers Endgame? I thought it was very good. <laughs> That's what we've been discussing, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, what do I think of it? <sighs> <laughs> it's a good film. It's a very good film. So, to, for starters, I think um, it's extremely worth mentioning is how big of a, you know, how hyped of a film this, this was. Yeah. Uh, well, I in relation to a lot of other films. Yeah, well, I, I think the special thing about it is the, the whole idea of the fact that it's coming at the end of the, the 22, 22, 21, 22 movies. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's like, obviously, the hype around it, it's the same level as, for example, Avatar, which is the first highest grossing film. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And in order to in order to surpass that, really, like you have to be something special, like you know, cinematic universe or something like that. I mean, Avatar was the first movie to do three D. Uh, that hence why it was so incredibly successful at the box office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, not, and also, especially to reach that point these days, it's like a lot harder because these days most people you know, watch film on Netflix, watch. For, oh uh, yes, DVD. Netflix, the famous killer of blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh wow, the murderer. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't necessarily talking about blockbuster, but ju just like the whole idea of like you know, not not as many people go to the cinema anymore. It's like, especially because these days to get a decent TV, like big TV, is comparatively to how it used to be, really not that much. Yeah. And so you essentially have a really great home cinema at home. So why not just watch it at home? Yeah, that is that is a big. Point, and so actually. in order to reach the kind of insane uh, budget or the insane like profit level. Avengers got at the box office is like pretty crazy. You have to be something like do something super successful like a full cinematic universe in order to a massive cinematic universe. Yeah. And what I love about it is how it's it's not like they've just done loads of films and then they've compiled them at the end. What they've done is they've managed to create yeah. characters that you really you know empathize well, with. Well, also just like the fact that the amount of planning that was involved because naturally you have to you have to have all the stories link in some way and have, have oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. various cameos of characters, like have it all have a cont continuous continuity. I think that's also very impressive just because as well as that, like each film has its own director, like not, they didn't have the same director for every film. And so naturally yeah, it's going to yeah. be creative differences. And so the fact that they were able to work past that and still make good films is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I don't know what to say now. I mean, <laughs> well, do, 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 do you know what was the third highest grossing film in the box office because i know first is avatar first at, is the avatar. Moment, at the moment it's catching right up. yeah okay second is uh what's the uh avengers endgame yeah yeah and yeah then, what's, the, what's the third i can't remember. i can't cause I, I think, I think titanic with... is up up there isn't it okay right looking up break we're gonna look them, <laughs> some things up <laughs> fact check fact check right. some in-depth research of looking up on Google. on on wikipedia <laughs> absolute trustworthy source yeah I always go incognito. Oh, you can't have people knowing that you're searching the highest grossing movies. Top grossest. <laughs> <laughs> Top grossest movies. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> 
gone gone with the okay no uh, highest grossing film so so of all time right so this is the highest grossing film ah for Star Wars yeah Avatar uh, Avengers Endgame Titanic so yeah, so, so it surpassed Infi- Titanic Infinity War was also high up there I didn't realize that yeah 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 Infinity War is and quite... the Avengers wow yeah Marvel Marvel big, Marvel at big, big boy big, Mar- big boy Disney yeah big well butts, the thing like, is D- Disney owns like because they own Star Wars as well so and Captain even Captain Marvel is in like on the 22nd yeah. that's so, so that's pretty impressive Iron Man 3 is it above that yeah Incredibles 2 is also Disney so literally Disney owns most of the <laughs> <laughs> is that a meme of Disney owning everything yeah 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 it's literally like uh, the the big court big court yeah. right there yeah I mean to be fair I don't Star really have Wars a problem Wars. with it because like everyone everyone goes on about how much they hate the, the new Star Wars films but I at least well really so- Solo the uh, Solo Rogue One yeah. And also, I really enjoyed so. I, I, re- I really liked it. I especially like. I, I think it's mainly like the hardcore trilogy fans that I think didn't yeah. like it. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, Disney owns literally like everything on there. Well, not uh, everything, but ooh, uh, we're only like we're only like fifty million well, yeah, away from did, did Avatar. You hear, like I, well, I saw last night on Facebook that like, um, uh, they're re-putting out Avengers Endgame on to the cinema. I think. Or really? I think, I, or at least in America, or somewhere at least. And it's getting like an extended, like, there's going to be an end credit scene in this version or something. Oh. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how true that is, but I saw it, I saw it online. And I think, I think part of the reason might be to kind of beat the record. Yeah. But, uh, c- cause, it could be. Because the whole, th- the thing is, it it came out like just before the summer. Yeah. Uh, summer holidays. And so obviously now the tons of new films coming out, like uh, yesterday, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but yesterday, and a bunch of other films like that. Yeah, uh, like the like big names that are taking it out of the cinema. So it's actually had a lot less of a stay on the cinema than like other films. I don't know how much, but uh, and yet still, big bucks, big bucks, Disney. At I it mean, again, I think it's really interesting because most because uh, quite a lot of people um know about the marvel franchise and they know like uh, some of the characters at least yeah i, um, I mean even even my parents who like <laughs> know nothing about that kind of thing yeah yeah still like know the characters and know that it exists so. yeah and yet like avatar even though it's because it's number one i suppose it is just number one because of the three well yeah i mean and... like i mean t- take yourself back to then if someone was to go oh yeah there's a 3d film like I'd probably go watch it as well, yeah, and it's like for no, a relatively affordable price. I mean, it's understandable that why it's. I don't think I've ever watched Avatar. Have you not? No, I don't think. I saw so. it on DVD, like in primary school, but that's. Oh, it. okay, right. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it was particularly amazing. I think well, uh, in terms of like the story or. or I know there's like. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was sex in trees. <laughs> <laughs> a perfect synopsis yes uh, it, i think the main thing is number one it's 3d and number two it's like like at least three quarters of the film is all cgi which yeah. for, which for what what day did it come out avatar yeah um i think uh, i remember well i mean for back then i think it was like what like a, 2009 uh, 2009 yeah. so like for back then it's like it's quite that's insane, that's insane quite CGI. Impressive, like yeah. if you think of the other films that were released like late late single digit 2000s it's like yeah and a lot of funding probably got into that yeah oh yeah 100 percent. i mean you think of like the the budget for infinity war or whatever where the it's a lot less cgi yet still it's like me- mega yeah it's mega insane i mean okay so good good uh good good point here that we're coming across um so you well i'm kind of changing it a little bit but you know a bit more about Marvel than I do. I think you uh, do. I've seen more of the films than you. I think so. you definitely see more. <laughs> like list like a film that you probably don't think I've seen in Marvel franchise. Like because uh, I've seen. Have the you seen first all, the, all the Captain Americas? No, I've seen none of the Captain Americas. Oh, they're, they're some of the best ones. Civil War. Yeah. Have you seen Civil War? Uh, I oh no wait. I think right. The only one I've seen is Civil War because my friend went to see it quite a while oh, back, yeah, and I yeah yeah, and I wanted to. I think um, yeah, I, I like that kind of film. It's just. Like it's very kind of generic male testosterone fueled action where there's nothing but you just want to see big strong men beating each other up. That's like <laughs> that's that's that that's like the, that's the essence of the MCU, isn't it? It's just I well I I think my first um my first ever Marvel experience was definitely the sort of generic kind of 
bashy bashy, you know, big strong men. Yeah, well, I mean that that's but, that's essentially like I mean even even at comic books with the same characters, yeah, it's, it's yeah. essentially the driving, the whole driving thing. It's just like, of course, the average target audience is like male naturally, and so it's just like. I think Civil War had the essence of that way, just beating, just strong people beating each other up. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that, that, that's what I first saw into it. However, once I delve deeper, which I always do with any kind of franchise that I that I get interested in, um, I delve deeper and I actually look at the characters, and they oh, it just gets me so invested in it. You yeah, know? well, I mean, some more than others, though. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's fair enough. Like, I think some are a lot more one-sided than others. Like, I really like Doctor Strange and those kind of characters. Oh, I, I love Doctor Strange. I think ones that have really boring powers are equally as boring, like Captain Marvel. Right, let's, let's talk about <laughs> Captain Marvel, Max. Let's talk about Captain Marvel. I get Marvel. a lot of flack for hating her. That, uh, I, 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 Brie Larson as an actor, I think, is fine. But, yeah, yeah. But, number one, I don't think the character's that well written. And number two, I just don't like it. Interesting. I just don't like Well, I mean, she's just a bit of a douchebag in Endgame. She's just... <laughs> She's just nothing but, like, mean to the other characters. Uh, yeah, she's a little uh, bit, to be fair. And, like, in any other film, that bit where they take down that ginormous battleship, you'd think it's some kind of a... Uh, you know, there'll be this long sequence of them finding the weak spot or whatever, but no, yeah. she just flies through it. <laughs> yeah. Yet she can't beat up Thanos. What? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Uh, well, not, not just that. So her power... She's literally just Superman, but, like, a rubbish yeah. a rubbish version. <laughs> just, just Superman, but a douchebag. That's, like... <laughs> I, I just don't like her. I haven't seen. I haven't seen Captain Marvel. The solo. No, film. you see, so, I haven't seen so the solo she might film be either. She might because I, I think that I, I think a, a thing with creating a, um, a a thing a trouble maybe possible issue with creating a um, MCU a cinematic universe is that sometimes you can have films where you you're sort of expected to know some things. And yeah. I think well, some, well, I mean, especially sometimes... especially in the big ensemble ones, like. You have so many. Yeah. You have so many characters that like they kind of expect you. Like it's not like they're going to give you the whole origin story of every character. You, no, you kind of have to have film, a base though. knowledge. Like, yeah. Why yeah. is there this random guy that shoots string out of his hands and can like attach the walls? Yeah. Or like someone has a giant gravity hammer or whatever. You, know, <laughs> you just kind of you got to you got to yeah you got to know a bit about it. But at the same time, that then allows them to have all these cool characters, but a different story. Yeah. Uh, like every time, and so yeah, I think it's cool, but. It also makes it pretty hard for like anyone to get into it. Like I know if I were to, if I were to show my dad Endgame, he'd just be so confused because <laughs> like he oh it's the spider guy he can climb to stuff, but there you know. <laughs> but it's actually Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like oh it's it's the it's the Iron Boy and it, no yeah I mean I think I. I was quite invested in it after Thor Ragnarok because I, I I saw That's Thor Ragnarok, film. and that is a very good film. Well, I, I think comedy. I think the films were starting to get um, into a position where it was kind of the same thing over and over again. I feel like with, with Ant Man, it was a good film, but it was very it felt very formulaic in the whole. Yeah. Uh, and I so can, and I so they it. it started to like move away from that uh, where it was a lot more. You know, Thor Ragnarok was super out there. I think Taika Waititi directed that. I really like his stuff. He, he's very quirky. And so, and then after that, obviously the Russo brothers did Endgame. And I mean, they're just good. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's less so the fact that they do quirky, interesting stuff. It's just like that they're the main superhero -y people directors you come to. I'm trying to think who else directed the other films. Sean Gunn did age of ultron no I, I can't remember now but but anyway uh, just making them more quirky and interesting like i mean even the blue blu ray copy of uh ant man and the wasp over there or, yeah 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 it's, that that film like took the ant man thing and just made it more interesting and like just like you know yeah I, another well, character having toddler going around school <laughs> yeah that was funny yeah no well what it was interesting is that a lot of people don't like that film. I know that Jack Howard really doesn't like that film, and 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 to be, I mean, there are some moments where it's a bit sort of slow, not slow. Yeah, but like well, sort of I mean, bit, then, but I, at the end of the day, it's it's good. I, I really yeah, liked it. Yeah, it's just I guess I understand why people get very fatigued at Marvel stuff. It's very like if you don't like it, if you don't like one of them, you probably won't like any of them. It's very like. Well, I mean, it's interesting because Jack Howard likes, you know, he loves Spider Man, and, and mm. you know, he he likes most of the Marvel things. But it maybe I don't know so some films. Well, you know, I do films. I do feel like they don't explore the kind of size changey stuff enough. I think it would be cool yeah. to. 
like the action they could have with that, with that, especially especially in the first film where the the main villain dude can also shrink down. Like, yeah. there, there's so much. Like, even though the final se- final fight was pretty awesome with like that Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, that was brilliant! But they could do so much more cool stuff. I think. Like, yeah. Well, my favorite part of Ant Man was when he went quantum small and i think uh, you know in the cinema obviously that no, <laughs> technical no, term quantum what? small, quantum small. <laughs> boss i'm going in quantum small <laughs> quote from ant-man and the wasp do you just do you guys just put quantum in front of oh yeah, yeah um no he 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 went you know smaller than atom and i love that kind of concept like how you know it, it's just really interesting well, also just I'm the quite... visuals of like the whole quantum realm i think oh really yeah cool. especially in that man and the wasp but like they yeah, can do yeah. some whole like world exploring kind of thing in that That'd oh be really cool. yeah no i in the first film actually re-watching it now i think they could have done a bit more with the quantum thing bit maybe well bit i mean longer, they, they use it a bit but... in endgame but the, the thing is yeah but it's <laughs> <laughs> iron man just uses it to invent time travel in five oh minutes. yes yes <laughs> um <laughs> Mr. Stark, yes, let's just hang on. If I think a bit travel. harder, I can <laughs> I can invent time travel. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, they did gloss over that a little but bit, but at the same time, the it's, the like, it's those kind of creative liberties that you can kind of take. Because yeah. I mean, Marvel is like their films are fairly camp in like like they don't take take themselves too seriously. Well, yeah. at some points anyway. Um, but yeah, so so I think you can get away with having cheesy stuff like that as long as it's not blatantly obvious it's yeah just... yeah yeah I, th- I think i think the uh one of my favorites you know bits of marvel is like the quirkiness and the and the comedy of it uh yeah, in yeah. some instances well where... i mean d- just the ridiculous scenario and the ridiculous that... scenarios, well, because obviously yeah. the powers the powers uh like <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, table not, over. Not, not no, stuff fine, over. Fine, fine. uh the powers can change so just the powers can Bring so much weird scenarios. To yeah, it that yeah. They can just make it very funny, uh, especially if you things you don't think about first, like you know, oh, Spider Man, he can swing around with his webs and that's it. But then you get so much more you can do with it. Yeah, and yeah. Then... Trapping Thanos in Infinity War that was pretty, <laughs> pretty epically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so overall, Avengers. So as as a sort of second part, um, do you think Endgame sort of succeeded in? I think it, it did in bringing Infinity Wars. Yeah, so conclusion. it's very different to Infinity War. I feel yeah. like Infinity War is a lot slower paced and more, yeah, uh, almost dramatic. Well, there's a whole thing of like the main the main character of Infinity War, Thanos, and like, uh, yeah, I love how they do that. They make him the main character. They follow him yeah. alongside the. Yeah. But if I had to choose between the two, I'd definitely pick Endgame. Yeah. I, I feel, Again, it, it feels more lean towards a kind of testosterone fueled, uh, <laughs> big strong men fighting big strong men. I, I, I just like that. I just like that kind of. Uh... But also all that stuff coming together again, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and all well, that. And also, it's like it brings you back to when they first did the whole for the first Avengers, and like, um, it's all kind of like, oh, whoa, all these cool characters are now together, like the, the kind of huge hurrah moment, that kind of thing. It kind of felt similar, similar to that in a way. Yeah. And and also it's quite interesting because now they have to move on from Endgame and like yeah and Spider Man Far From Home yeah. you know all that kind of stuff that coming out and I'm really looking forward to that film I actually. am very looking forward because it. it's like introducing the multiverse and that kind of thing which yeah. is like it's very cool kind of like in Doctor Strange when they're in the multi in yeah the yeah multiverses yeah. and stuff but um, at the same time like obviously the early MCU films were so grounded in the sense that like I don't know first Ant Man film you're fighting this mustache twirling. Or lack of hair, actually, guy. Yeah, lack uh, of hair, guy. <laughs> yeah, you're fighting lack of hair, guy. Uh, <laughs> in a fairly small scale thing, and the same with Spider Man. Like he's fighting against this villain who, yeah, who at most could like damage the economy a bit and kill, kill a, <laughs> a few people. You know, but, which in comparison to like literally wiping out half of the universe, a big old gauntlet guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like, but after you go there, you can't really come back. That's why. That's why. Um, we're, that's the struggle with a lot of main films. Like I don't know, like think of Mission Impossible. For, first one, you stop, I, I can't remember exactly what happens in all of them, but it's like that, that kind of thing of oh, first film you're stopping like a small bomb threat, and the yeah. next one you're stopping oh, a nuke hitting uh, a yeah. uh, uh, city, and then the next one you're stopping the world exploding, yeah. and then you're just like, 
Oh, How far can you go? Oh, uh, in the next one, uh, oh, we we can't think of a bigger explosion. So he, <laughs> so here's what we'll do: we'll make it it's personal this time, and so, and so his his girlfriend's in danger or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and then once you got to that point, you, you leave leave it for a few years and make a reboot, or you just give up on the franchise. It's like, so it, I'll be interested to see where they take it because it's like, yeah. well, you can't have this, these small, super small scale things anymore because like. People will just be like, uh, where is half the universe being wiped out? So. Yep, you did the clap. Okay, we're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. I think we've done enough claps now. <laughs> okay, go, go on. We've got go it. Ant Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get you off of this topic. Yeah, no, uh, that's right. Now, now, I think the whole Ant Man up the butt, up Thanos the butt <laughs> thing. So the whole the whole theory is that oh, they don't need to beat Thanos really. Ant Man just shrinks, goes inside Thanos through whatever orifice is available, <laughs> and then expands. Well, the butt as well, like you can go through. The well, it's, it's, it's just a meme. It's just a meme, isn't it? Well, it's yeah, a... but, but it's like you <laughs> see. But see, that also be distracting. Well, I mean, bear in mind Thanos literally took like a Captain Marvel fist to the face and like yeah d- d- hardly took a scratch so like with that man expanding inside of him would his inside just take it like a champ and then just well interestingly <laughs> i have done some research oh, and i've no. watched the film theory video on it <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, what do uh, they say he said that because of this guy who actually calculated it in a in a university paper apparently that's, a yeah, university yeah, yeah, genuinely. He, uh, can it's, Thanos... It's not, that's not the main thing, but he, he was like, um, the strength of Thanos. Like, he calculated the strength of Thanos compared okay. to a human being. Oh, I thought, I thought his, like, his, the- oh, no. his thesis was, like, <laughs> is, uh, is Thanos' inside strong enough to withstand the like, quantum force or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good title for a paper. Also, this was someone's effect. actual... Yes. Yeah. So, like, so they, they were project, like... University project. Properties of... Um, no, it was, it was like a guy with a PhD. It was like professor. Yeah. Oh, so, like, so, so it's just kind of like a fun side thing. Um, no, no, it's like to do with his materials thing. So he was publishing a paper on materials, and he also added some like sci-fi element of okay. Thanos' strength. Sure. Anyway, well, sure. Uh, so he calculated that it's like Thanos is two hundred thousand times stronger in terms of pure like muscle tissue uh, than than sure. humans. Where does he get that like information from? I don't like like pro- probably based on calculations from Infinity War, like maybe a punch or something. I don't know, but um, okay, something somehow he did it. So film theory, good old Matt Pat himself was like, okay. <laughs> so Matt Pat was calculating like calculating the force of yeah, yeah man's expansion. Yeah, and he found that that force would be nowhere near enough to to like destroy him. Well, so I apparently. Th- Ant Man would get crushed by Ant Man. I, I think I think what would have been funny if it, in the film they acknowledge it in some way, even if it's just that like, would be funny. Nah, have yeah. one of the guys like suggest it, and Ant Man's like, no way, or, or, some, or something. That, like would that. that would have been funny. That would have been good because that theory actually originated before Infinity War was. Um... Yeah, well, I mean, as soon as the concept of Ant Man was put into the comics, I bet people were just like, well, can he just shrink, go inside someone, and expand again? Yeah, and just yeah. kill them. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely Ant Man's probably one of my favorite. Uh, heroes like the power is just so cool i mean you you essentially have invisibility that, yeah that's what, that's as basi- well basically yeah. as well as just like you know you can fit through any gap to infiltrate anywhere it's just cool yeah it's it's, it's really amazing yeah. well, and then there's like black widow what what what's her skill <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing she can like grapple people with her legs and like <laughs> squeeze it really tight to kill them or something something like that well, yeah. no, okay People hate on Black Widow. I actually quite like her as a character. I think her powers are a bit pants because she doesn't have any. <laughs> Although she doesn't. I mean, she's she's like a she's like her whole characters are kind of oh I've been trained in the FBI, CIA, KGB. <laughs> you know, I've mastered. Well, what's Captain America doing? He has a shield. Yeah, Captain America has a super soldier serum. What is oh, that? Oh, you haven't seen the film. Have I you? haven't seen the film. <laughs> I thought it was just a guy with a really strong nah, nah, nah. shield. Okay, so so he. He proved himself before he got like injected with this stuff that he's like this kind of incredible, uh, like heroic guy. I mean, he like throws himself on top of a grenade to like stop people from being killed, that oh, kind wow, of stuff. Yeah. So like that's a way of making it seem so he hasn't just been made from the serum and that's it. He's like a lifeless person. They they, they avoid that kind of cliche. Uh, yeah. But then he gets like done with this 
serum, which basically just makes him insanely strong and powerful. Like he can oh. run faster than a car. Like I, in Civil War, like that 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 scene where he's running away from Black Panther, they're just running faster than the cars and like going. Oh down. wow! Uh, and and yeah. hence why he's able to throw the shield. I assume I assume uh, throw the shield like and kill people with it. I assume like the the whole knowing exactly where the shield would bounce and like come back to him. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, so some of I think some of like the comics and the m- films and stuff they retcon certain areas so like for example i think in some of the comics it is that also almost gives him like a spider sense ish kind of thing but obviously not okay. spider i think like kind of a sixth sense i might i might be wrong I, I thought i thought i saw that on some comic booky thing on the internet but um like for example spider-man he uh in some of the stuff he's he completely makes the uh, designs the web fluid that the, the, that does it and, uh, right, and, yeah. and but some of the stuff is organically coming I think in uh, the Sam Raimi films uh, his his hand organically makes it and that kind of thing so it's, oh that's it, cool yeah, just, I, yeah yeah uh, so yeah it, I find it interesting kind of the continuity of that kind of stuff and, and like how close it is to the films so that's interesting so I didn't actually know that because I haven't watched it <laughs> what is this about Sp- but, Spider-Man? Uh, oh no, and the and the like the Sol- super soldier, soldier serum. serum, yeah, super soldier serum, yeah, super soldier. S- I'm trying to think if there's any other, other examples of that kind of thing. <laughs> mm, not really, not that I can think of anyway. That's that's just yeah. I I I just yeah. So so they all sort of have powers apart from Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I might be wrong. Maybe maybe she has some kind of power that I don't know about. But I think it's yeah. literally just the fact that she was trained by all these incredible things. However, I think the films do a great job of kind of avoiding the whole she just becomes useless thing because yeah. uh, her whole relationship with the Hulk and how she's able to control yeah. him not getting angry. Yeah. Although that that's now irrelevant because he's become this oh he's become this scientist. half half boy yeah. yeah. Uh, so well, I mean that's spoilers. She's she dies <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah uh which I, I was fairly happy about i mean to be honest i didn't mind if her or hawkeye died really I'm then i'm not the biggest fans of the characters but i think now that hawkeye is ronin i'm super excited because he's, he's an awesome character so, oh. so i don't know if you probably not no, no. you don't know anything <laughs> no I, i'm just pre- i'm pretending that i knew so what that hawkeye means. has this like kind of alter ego i don't know i i'm not that much clued in in the comics but it's basically like this kind of edgy hawkeye alter ego thing where um in the films he's became this kind of murderous dude you know that that you know what i'm talking about the bit where he's in japan and he's killing everyone oh yeah yeah yeah, that yeah, guy, yeah. yeah, yeah so sure. um uh it's it's implied that he's been the, gone on this murderous rampage after his family died at the end of the snap uh oh. and while they never say the name that's his like he looks exactly like his alter ego ronin in the, from the comic books where he's just oh. comes this dude. uh and so yeah yeah uh I, I just think that's really cool i just like the character and yeah I'm that's glad, interesting and that's why i'm glad he stayed alive at the end because i'll be inter- oh, i'll, I'll yeah. be interested to see like how um how how they like take that on like whether he's having to deal with all the, like the guilt of having killed everyone or uh killing tons of kill uh, killed tons of people uh, but yeah, I was about to say something else, but I've completely forgotten now. That's fine. I Thanos, mean, it's... Thanos clicked away. Thanos clicked away your idea. Yeah, yeah it's, we're pretty much gone. Um, right. Speaking of Thanos clicking, what would you do with an Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is but a common question that I always you, ask. You ask this a lot, Jacob. And I, I, every time I say this, is just a question of like, what would you oh do infinite with, power? Yeah. What would you do with unlimited power? It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so, yeah. What would I do with unlimited power? See, then comes the question of, is it moral to do anything with unlim- unlimited power? Uh, and what's the context of me getting it? Okay, so let's just imagine that a hooded figure... <laughs> okay. <laughs> ...comes sure. along. Uh, so you, you scream, right? Okay. Oh, wow. I... We're getting really role play. Oh, we're getting role play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've screamed. So, I've screamed. Okay. There's a hooded figure. Hooded figure comes in, yeah. and um, he's just sort of like, Hello. <laughs> shimming me this yeah the good old sammy paul uh, Hello. <laughs> Hi, a nice greeting from this yeah okay, yeah so wait it's is it like, am, am i am i chilling in my uh bedroom or your two bros chilling in a oh well, okay one, you're, you're one here bro. as well oh no no not two. <laughs> one bro chilling in his room okay, lonely in, boy i'm in my room uh let's just imagine that first yeah so yeah. you're in your room yeah. and then somebody opens the door and you think oh hi mum 
It's not your mum. <laughs> it's, oh. it's 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 <laughs> mum. What's that sweet hood you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I got it from Gucci actually. <laughs> um, it's uh yeah. So this guy comes in. He's completely like completely hooded. He's like you can't really see his face. He just goes, Max, I have a gift for you and he's, he's got like underneath his his clothing right i'm, I'm not gonna strip on camera but he's he's, he's got like a <laughs> he's got like a no no that's fine yeah that's probably a good idea um he's got his gauntlet <laughs> he's, he's got the gauntlet okay so he just whips out a gauntlet and uh he goes right this will grant you unlimited power all you Thank have you. to do is click your fingers and think of anything you want to think of. Do I know that Marvel exists in this theoretical yes. universe? Okay, so, so you're I know, like, oh I know my god, what... it's an Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, okay. yeah. So let's see if I, yeah, yeah, so you know uh, what Marvel is. Well, again, it... <laughs> it's just a little That's irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, but, I mean, in that context, is well, it's just like, if I've suddenly given unlimited power, then is it moral to do anything with that? Because, like, we had this discussion a few weeks back. We did. It's just like, well, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people would say, you know, I'll stop world, world hunger, world and, hunger. and 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 like or, world or, 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 like or any war or any big stuff. issue that's like yeah. causes bad stuff or whatever. But then, like, we're we're doing just that. Surely comes repercussions. No, I don't know. It's interesting. It's just like if you fix something, then is another thing going to pop up? I don't know. It's in, it's interesting. Or like. But but there's that other theory where it's just like all people that say like uh, you know ask these kind of philosophical questions a lot have they actually been in that scenario <laughs> and exactly. they're just asking people like anonymously for advice <laughs> guys I have I have already used the gauntlet for this and I'm warning Max oh no that wow you use unlimited power to bring me here on an yeah. <laughs> I mean that's not the that's best thing the worst imagination. <laughs> <laughs> It's not okay. No, obviously, <laughs> I want to like you know bring you everywhere I go. Thank you, Jacob. Um, if, imagine if I did that, you'd just be like, I, I'm just tethered I'm just, to you. Right, for you're life. you're you're here now, and you just go. <laughs> no, you don't even teleport. You just like get flung towards <laughs> me. <laughs> nice. People just think you're. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, what well, a plane coming along. I think unlimited, unlimited it's power is just like. Well, I mean, okay, try maybe not unlimited power. Think of like an insanely large amount of money, because that's could potentially happen in real so life. So you're Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> well, not necessarily Mr. Beast, but yeah, I don't know no. you win the lottery or you something. Got, you win the yeah, lottery. Yeah, yeah. you got like hundred million. See, that's a lot more. I mean, power. that's actually possible that it could happen in real life. Yeah. So it's a bit. more... We were talking about this as well, weren't we? <laughs> so at a time, uh, me and Max were talking about like so we. This is this this conversation has gone so many topics, but it's great. I love this. So we've got. I win the Euro Millions, which in Europe is um, basically the top prize is a hundred million pounds uh, or whatever currency equivalent that is. Yeah, so you're basically um, set for life easily. Easily, like, like yeah. ten times. I over. mean, like that's well, a lot more than ten times over. Well, I mean, not for me because I, mean, I would just depending buy depending all on the how fr- <laughs> depending on how frugal you are, literally, you could spend like a good like ninety percent of that money and still live off of what's left. Fine, I mean, perhaps, yeah. Especially especially if you like stick that all in a bank account. Surely, like you just get insane amounts of interest. No, I, I have, ter- I'm, I've no idea about the intricacies of it. Possibly, but... I don't, I don't know, I don't know how banks work. But, <laughs> but... and I'm, I'm a functioning Two adult. Two economical boys. <laughs> I'm a functioning adult. I have no idea what's going on. Um, yeah. So, if you had, I mean, first of all, what was the first thing you would do? If, if it was with, a funny, with a large amount of money, with that much money. Well, if I just suddenly won the lottery, <clears throat> then. See, I think, I think, I mean, the the correct answer would, uh, and I think the thing that would probably be for the best is just to give it all to charity, or yeah, give, I agree, give it so, to to a place that needs it. I agree, yeah. However, if I, if push came to shove and I genuinely got that amount of money, <laughs> would I do it? I don't know. Oh, questioning the morals of Max yeah, on YouTube it's like, here. It's so tempting to just be like, okay, I'll just, I'll just set aside a million for me and I'll just give all the rest to charity or whatever. But then yeah. still, that's a lot of money. And then, I mean, instantly, if you win the lottery, your friends will, ex- well, not necessarily friends, but, well, I mean, friends, as well as just acquaintances and all that kind of stuff, will expect you to be like, hey, can I have a hundred pounds or, or whatever? Uh, and, and, and they'll be like, and you, if you say no, they'll be like, well, you won the lottery. You have like basically infinite money. Well, why not? <laughs> yeah. And while, while they have no actual uh, actual kind of right to your money or whatever, 
you kind of understand where they're coming from. I mean, like... Yeah. I mean, you essentially have unlimited money at this point, as long as you're not insanely, uh, you know, loose with your wallet. So it's just like, you know, wh- why shouldn't they expect it? Especially, like, close friends or whatever. But then if you give it to one... If you give a large amount of money to one friend, then on another... Uh, it all gets very out of hand. So I don't know. I think morally it would just be best to give it away or to charity or whatever. Give it to a good charity or uh, or put yeah, it into funding absolutely. for some something in need or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. But whether I do that or not... <laughs> I, because cause bear in mind also, literally all my life's goals or whatever, like, I don't know, I, I want to become a graphic designer to um, make uh, make good money as well as enjoy my job. Well, as soon as, as soon as I have all that money, the only reason why I'd ever want to do that is because I enjoy be, doing graphic design or whatever. But yeah. if there's ever the slightest point where it's just like, oh, I'm getting a bit bored of this, or oh, this job's being a bit stressful, it'll be so easy to just be like, right, I quit. And then, yeah. yeah. But then I feel like it's terrible to just live a life where, you know, you have all that money, you're just chilling, uh, especially like from the age of 18. <laughs> yeah. Like you're retired from 18. That is, <laughs> that is like. I retired before I started, literally, the definition of me. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, well. What what are we gonna do with the rest of my life now? Because because uh, part of all the hobbies and everything you do or whatever is like it's preparing you for yeah you want to do stuff yeah yeah, yeah it's on. just like oh I really enjoy editing for example and then yeah. and then when oh. when I eventually I don't know, get really good at that as well as enjoying it I can use it to make money uh, and, and yeah. do that kind of thing whereas literally at that point uh, it's literally just I enjoy it and that's it and so if there's any point ever a point that I. I get a bit annoyed with it or whatever, as I have done for pretty much any hobby that I've had. Uh, even though I come back to them, I'll just be like, right, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore because why? Why should I? It's uh, whereas obviously, if you need it to make money, you push through that uh, burnout or whatever, and then you carry on and get better. I don't know. It's just like when f- when faced with any adversity, you can just throw money at it. Essentially, <laughs> if you, I mean, if you have it, basically infinite money. I don't know. Well, what, what do you think? What do you think? In conclusion, uh, what I would do uh, if I had infinite money is I would buy all of the merch uh, <laughs> and or uh, buy all those subscribers. <laughs> so Buy yourself subscribers. <laughs> <Yes>. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to our interesting chat about various marvel things if you'd like this video even though, well give it back, a like back when the topic of this video was marvel <laughs> back, back when we were talking Remember about that? marvel stuff <laughs> who don't well don't know her um yeah so like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to maybe hear us talk about other things smash that like who button. knows we've had an interesting very nice button. discussion smash that bell icon <laughs>